Welcome to the Insomnia Project holiday episodes. Grab your eggnog, your hot cocoa, your cider, your glass of mulled wine, whatever makes you happy and keeps you warm around this time of the year. I want to uh, thank you for joining us throughout the year and during these holiday episodes. Uh, Some of them will have more of a Christmas bent and some of them will have more of a holiday bent. Whatever holiday you celebrate or however you end your year, we want you to know that you are appreciated here at the Insomnia Project. So if you're celebrating with a big family, know that we wish your family all the best for the new year and the holiday. And if you're alone during the holidays, know that we are here, the Insomnia Project, for you. Listen to our past episodes. Know that you are appreciated and that we care about you. And let us know that you're listening and that uh, you may be alone or with just a few friends. Um, Email us or Twitter us. Tweet us, I guess is the correct term, and we will send you a special holiday message. Thank you so much for being a part of our insomnia family where a lot of us can't sleep and we use tools like this uh, to help us find sleep it is an honor for me to make this podcast available as always we hope you sit back relax and listen as we have a conversation about the holidays did you hear my canadian about there i heard it one thing we can promise you is that our conversation will be festive in nature for these episodes So feel free to sit back, curl up to a roaring fire, and listen and sleep. I have a special guest in the studio. This is a dear friend of mine. I always say this. I always say that everyone's a dear friend of mine, but you truly are a person I've known for many years. I've I've spent many Christmases and New Year's with you. So I'm quite thrilled to have Chris Bond here on the Insomnia Project. Marco, I'm just thrilled to be here as well because I love, not only do I love you, mm-hmm. but I love Christmas. So this is just, we're just double downing yeah, today on, how, on things that make me excited. So. You're you're also a lover of theme parks. And Great. I want to mention this because you have a podcast that's called called We Like Theme Parks. Yeah, the We Like Theme Parks podcast. And I, I got to tell you, Marco, you are a big inspiration for doing the pod, just seeing, hey, you know, I can do a podcast. And I know this great guy who could show me what I'm doing yeah. wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, so. it's it's lovely. And, and I've had a friend who was recently on another one of my podcasts mm-hmm. who heard an episode that you did on my other podcast, Eat and Drink. Yes. And she was like, Jenny was like, I didn't know Chris had a podcast. I'm listening to his podcast now. Oh, amazing. So it's being on other people's podcasts. It's great. Is is great because yeah. the community is so wonderful. It's too. true. Yeah. Uh, so if you want, if you are a fan of theme parks or you're someone who's never been and are like jonesing to go to a theme park but don't know, are, are scared about like all the multitude of things that might be presented to you, listen to We Like Theme Parks because you're going to get a honest perspective from people who have been there, know it well, and have a love for it. Is that a fair way to describe I think it? It's a fair assessment, but I think what makes us stand it apart from most other theme park podcasts yeah. is that we just we're just trying to have fun. It's it's information, but it's mostly uh, entertainment. So there's all kinds of theme park podcasts out there that are just a bunch of, you know, nerdy talking heads that are going to spit news at you. Right. But we talk about the news and we give uh, informed opinions, but also they're very fun. Uh, I'm doing it with Mark Andrada, who's a funny guy. Yes. Uh, and my partner, Dustin Foos, who knows all about the parks and is kind of an insider, who's also a funny guy. And uh, we just kind of make magic. We just have a good time. So and that's great. really what it's about. So you don't have to be an informed Disney Universal Studios nerd yeah. to get something from the show. So, yeah, pop on over to We Like Theme Parks and give us a listen. We've had Mark and Drought on the show. But let's take us to Christmas because I know you're a big fan of Christmas. I am, yeah. And I've spoken to people about Christmas on the farm. But let's talk about Christmas in the city. Yes, yeah, city Christmas. Yeah. I happen to live right beside one of the biggest Christmas events in the city of the year, which is the Christmas market. And a lot of people who live in our neighborhood are not super thrilled about that. They're okay. like, oh, it's Christmas market season. That means the whole city is going to come down into our little neighborhood. There's going to be nowhere to park. There's going to be, it's going to be impossible to get around. Mm-hmm. 
and I'm of a different mind. I'm thrilled to have people come into my hood. Okay, so and let's celebrate. Let's talk about your hood yeah. so that if anybody's visiting Toronto around Christmas time, they know where to go. That's a great pitch. Yeah. So I live in right in between two Toronto landmarks, which is the Distillery District and the St. Lawrence Market. Okay. Um, so I live smack dab in the middle, right? Which has actually been amazing. Sure. Um, so the every year in the distillery they have the Toronto Christmas Market, and I got to tell you, I've lived in the neighborhood for about a decade. Yeah. And every year this market has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and longer, and louder and brighter, and a lot of people might go, huh. Eh. I'm the opposite. Okay. I love it. You know, the more trees, the more lights, the more carols, the more shops, the more artisan um, cheese sandwiches, whatever. Sure. <laughs> I will take it. Is it uh, fair to say it. it's set up like a European uh, market, Christmas market, where they have little stands, and at each stands, which are kind of like little shacky things, mm-hmm. a very wooden in theme. Yeah. So a Swiss or a sort of uh, North yeah. Europe feel. Yeah. They have uh, different booths, so you can buy ornaments at one. You could drink hot chocolate at another. There's mulled wine, mm-hmm. uh, sandwiches. Like keep you going. Said. Yeah. yeah. So all those kind of things. Sure. That's absolutely right on the nose, okay. uh, Marco. That's. They have all those kinds of things, and whether you're there to shop or you're there to have a snack. Yeah. Uh, but Santa Claus is there. They have activities there. Sure. Um, there's a lot of – there's this humongous tree, probably the biggest tree in the city outside yeah. of um, Nathan Phillips Square. I, right. would, I, would I think it's bigger. It may be. I don't know. It's beautiful. They always have – there's a grandstand, and they always have carolers or – Santa or some kind of entertainment, Christmas themed sure. entertainment, but you're, but what's also unique about it is it isn't just this market that's happening. It's in a distillery, which is also on its own uh, a destination because sure. of that old school vibe, that kind of um, antique. Maybe I'm looking for this word that is kind of. A very Norman Rockwell experience. Sure. So when you throw Christmas into it, it just fits like a glove, of and course. it is um, not only fun but it's beautiful. And yeah. it's so uh, people from all over the city and outside of Toronto come in droves and pile down into yeah. the city. And in so much that I think that other places in the city have started to create their own versions of these Christmas markets. Right. Canada's Wonderland is doing something this year. Um, last year, the Aurora Fest began, which is in the um, the not the yeah the exhibition grounds, I believe. Sure. Um, around Ontario Place, so people are they're creating more and more events because the Toronto Christmas Market has become such a destination. Yeah, sure. So big. So, like I said, people in my neighborhood, a little bit buzzing about the parking situation, right. and you know their friends have nowhere to put their cars and right. such. But I'm like, listen, I can walk over to this beautiful market. Yeah. Take my dog, take my kids. Maybe my wife will even come too, you know? Fair enough. And we have a great time. And uh, you mentioned carols. Mm-hmm. And I know you're a songwriter and a singer with perfect pitch, I might add. Oh I have goodness. to mention that because I once sang with you in a show and I was always so <laughs> thrilled when you would look at me if I'd hit the note. But let's talk about your favorite carols. Oh, wow. It's Christmas carols, I think, are really personal to some people. Of course. Um, I think they're totally unique kind of carols and s- most people I think love the oldies sure the classics I'm definitely a Burl Ives kind of guy okay. and a Bing Crosby kind yeah. of guy um, those really speak to the kind of classic festivities yeah. that as you become older I think become more important to you you know what I mean right uh, especially when you have children sure some of those experiences start to really and those songs really bridge right into your heart mm-hmm. um, but you know I'll take me some and I, I love retreaded versions like some of the covers I'm happy to have a Michael Bublé give me a very nice you know uh, lounge version um, of A Christmas Carol but I'll I'll settle for some humorous stuff too I'm a big fan of Richard Cheese if you've ever heard of him and he's a lounge singer right he has a fantastic Christmas album of lounge versions of Christmas Carols but I would say the classics are the ones that really get into me. Oh, and I also enjoy the Motown Christmas okay. experience. Anything from the 70s, Stevie Wonders, Jackson 5, you know, mm-hmm. uh, any of that kind of Detroit sound. Love that. Yeah. Any of that Barry Gordy stuff, I'll yeah. take it. 
Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I really uh, enjoy that. How about I, yourself? Um, you know, I fall between two sides of the Christmas coin, the Ooh. Christmas carol coin. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's the, um, uh, what do they call it? The religious ones, and the, so the secular and the non-secular right. songs, right? So I have one in each camp that I always love to hear. I, I enjoy the religious songs as well. Yeah. I'm with you. I, I think... I, listen, to be quite frank, you know, if you want to get to mass, that's the entertainment is those beautiful Christmas carols. And it was always uh, a highlight for me as a kid. Sure. Uh, even as a child, I was a bit musical and I loved the choirs and I loved, you know, the old holy nights. And that's my favorite. That's, yeah. I mean, that just taps right into your your heart. You yeah. Know? So, uh, yeah, I'm with you. I think yeah. I have a foot in both camp, too. Yeah. I would agree. And uh, let's talk what. City Christmas means to you? Oh boy. So, you know, so we talked about the market, but talk to me about how you decorate a home in the city, which isn't as big as a home, let's say, in the suburbs yep. or in the farm, which we which we already spoke to Natasha mm-hmm. a Boomer about Christmas in the farm and how they would get trees from their farm and all this kind of stuff. Oh, wow. That how do great. You, yeah. How do you deal with Christmas in the city? And, and can it still be as joyous and fun and bright? Well, here's what I'll say is that it is a completely different experience yeah. because the city is teeming with activities and teeming with. Uh, things that you can do in the city and a part of Christmas in the city is going out of your home and experiencing those kind of things. Sure. Um, As a child, I vividly remember walking on Queen Street and looking at the windows in the Eaton Center in the Bay. That's our big Uh, mall. That's our big mall. Yeah. The beautiful displays. And I know that's a classic experience. Sure. Which they still do to this day. And um, so it's just a walk away. Um, We already discussed the Christmas market. Um, there's festivities and things to be seen all over the city. So you might not be able to express your home with lights or um, having the kind of decorations, the experience of driving around your neighborhood and seeing all the different houses lit up. Right. But in turn, when you're in the city, the city is lit up and the city is brilliantly decorated and you're spending a lot of time in that city and being a part of that experience. And if I could just back it up. A yeah, time, please. Because I like to do that. Yeah. Christmas is so special to me. And city Christmas being one thing. But Christmas in general, because it's a time when almost I would I'm going to generalize here and say when everybody is celebrating and everybody is happy and you see all your friends and family. Um, so to bridge that into a, a an experience in the city when you're not just enjoying yourself, but everybody is, and the town is celebrating. Right. Um, it's just double, triple, quadruple downs, uh, the experience. And if you're into lights, you're going to get lights. Sure. If you're into shows, you're going to get shows. And if you lived way up in the sticks or in the suburbs, you'd have to go somewhere to get some of those experiences. Right. Um, but when you're in the city, you're in the experience. Um, and so I think that's what makes a city Christmas so um, enjoyable and so festive. Right. Is you know, are you going to have chestnuts roasting by a, an open fire? Probably, Probably not. not. But you can buy some chestnuts right beside the giant tree in the giant square with the giant twinkly lights. Right. Uh, where that you are pre-roasted. And, pre-roasted. <laughs> where you and three hundred other friends are going to have a jolly old time. Um, and that is a special experience. And let's not forget the the Santa Claus parade, which oh, uh, right. happens in November, and I routinely go to with my children every year. And it's very exciting, and it's a big deal in the whole town. The town is packed. You know, we live on the parade route. This is a part right. of living in the city. Um, and it's an, another thing that my kids look forward to every year, and that's really special. I should mention, if you're unaware, the Santa Claus Parade that happens in Toronto is one of the bigger parades that we have in our city, and it's televised across the nation. And there's other nations that tune in to our Santa Claus Parade uh, because there's the belief 
in some nations that Santa is Canadian and some people believe Santa is Scandinavian and other people believe Santa is Polish. So there's this whole thing around that. But I know, for example, uh, and maybe our Russian listeners can confirm this, a lot of Russians will watch the, our Santa Claus parade. Really? Yeah. Uh, if you watch the Santa Claus parade on television, which I know you don't because you're there. I'm there, yeah. Um, they mention things like that. But if oh, you incredible. haven't checked out the Santa Claus parade in Toronto, check it out because it really is cool. And how long have you been going to the Santa Claus parade? I would say as a child, I remember journeying into the city. Right. Um, and now as a father, yeah, it's every year we do it. And so I've been doing it for four years. Um, have and- you ever been to the Santa Claus parade in Schaumburg, Ontario. I have okay. certainly have, and that's a, a fantastic as well. I think I was with you there. I think so. Like lights on a tractor, yep. uh, zooming down the boulevard. The, uh, I mean, you're going to get that villagey kind of experience. It's more of a rural, suburby kind of farm town. Yeah, it is also amazing. It's, it's just great. different. It's just yeah. a different kind of uh, en- enjoyable experience. Mm-hmm. So they're both great. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love how the whole city gets behind it. The whole yeah. town is in on Schaumburg Christmas. Yeah, and Schaumburg. So it's worth the – if you have friends that live in these small communities that celebrate like this, do partake because it is completely fun. I bought my Christmas wreath in Schaumburg. Maybe – it's going to be about nine years now. Oh, wow. Maybe more. And it's still going strong? It's – it's. I bought it in this small town, this beautiful Christmas wreath. Yeah. And it's on my door, and I love it. And everyone who comes to my door is like, where did you get this awesome wreath? Mm -hmm. And our mutual friend who's from Schaumburg Mm -hmm. uh, was with me when I bought it. And it was not inexpensive. Sure. But I was like, I'm going to buy it because it will remind me of your hometown. I'll always have it. And she's like, that's the Schaumburg Christmas wreath. You know, I do a lot of the same kind of thing. I buy a lot of Christmas ornaments when I go to places, especially when I'm traveling at the theme parks. I almost always buy a Christmas ornament. I was just in Niagara on the Lake and they have a beautiful Christmas shop in Niagara on the Lake. Yeah. And I was like, well, got to get a Niagara on the Lake Christmas bulb. So I can say, and it reminds me when every time I look at my tree, I can say, here's an experience I had. Here's a place I went to just right. by looking at my tree, decorating my tree or, and I'm trying to get my kids into that. Like this is, I went to Disneyland and I saw Mickey Mouse. Here's my Mickey Mouse bulb from that year. Or here's my, Tokyo Disney bulb from Tell when me, I went to Tokyo. Okay, and, you know, so that kind of thing. I'm going to bleed into a possible topic you guys might cover on We Like Theme Parks, which mm. is Christmas ornaments from theme parks. <laughs> you never know. I'm throwing that your way. <laughs> Throwing it out tell, there. Tell us some of the your favorite ornaments. Describe them for us that you got at these theme parks. Oh, well, they might relate to a character okay. or per- perhaps an attraction. So tell me some. Um, like, give me some me specifics. Some? Sure. Yeah. Your favorite. Uh, my favorite? I have a beautiful ornate bulb that I got from Disneyland Paris. Okay. And it essentially, it's hand painted and it has Mickey and Minnie and the Eiffel Tower and it's, you know, uh, Disneyland Paris. Right. Uh, whenever I went uh, last, uh, 2012, whatever it was. Um, but it's I, hand I, painted. Okay. It was it was not an inexpensive ornament. I see. Um, and so making sure that I got it home in one piece was a thing. Right. Um, but I have kind of more ornate bulbs like that, which I might not let the children touch. Sure. And then I have a you know a fuzzy goofy with mm-hmm. a Christmas hat on that I remember because it was the first bulb that I think my daughter Mason bought. Okay. And I said pick one, and she liked Goofy at the time. Right. Um, and that was when we were in Disneyland in California. So. Um, it was really nice that now that's her bulb. She asks, can I put up my bulbs? Oh. So it's kind of like her collection. And uh, so, yeah, I have a variety. I have a Haunted Mansion-inspired bulb. But then again, I also have Christmas bulbs. Lem, if you want to get into it, I have uh, Game of Thrones-themed Christmas well, ornaments. No, nothing says Christmas uh, like a Tron-themed Christmas ornament. Um, do you have a pickle ornament for your tree? I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great German tradition yeah. um, that has made its way to my home about two years ago when I found, when someone told me about it, I, had yeah. some, I was visiting a friend and they had that tradition. So we started it as well. So you know that tradition to, I did it last year with my mm-hmm. my nephew and my niece. So I put the, the pickle on my tree, the pickle mm-hmm. ornament. Mm-hmm. And I said to my niece and my nephew, all right, whoever finds it first gets to open the presents first. And they were like looking and I kind of, I hid it. Well enough. Yeah. 
but I hit, hit it low. So my nephew, who was four at the time, he had a shot. He had the best shot, and sure enough, he just went and grabbed it and pulled it <laughs> off the tree. I thought the tree was going to fall, but I was like, okay, okay, you found the pickle. I think I think last year I, I typically at Christmas I'll always do one kind of game. So I'll do my wife will open up a present and there'll be a riddle and I'll set you off on an adventure sure. around the house with clues that sends you to the next riddle and at the end is the Christmas present. I love the that. big expensive present. It just makes it a little bit more fun and yeah. a little more work. You got to earn this gift, and that's always fun. And I think I hit a riddle on the pickle. It started with the pickle. Oh, so you had to a little taped little riddle, and so the the pickle was quite deep. Because I was making my wife go find it. Sure. And it, I got to say, it took a while. <laughs> we were there for a while. We were like, okay, a little higher, a little getting warmer. Right. Um, but what a great tradition that is. And it's it's super fun for the family. And uh, what's great about Christmas bulbs is some of them are there just for the aesthetics. And some of them have a meaning, whether it's something that your kid made. Sure. Or something from a place. So it's really, it's just an opportunity for you to express yourself and express a Christmas and your Christmas memories um, so it's a real beautiful thing. And I, you know, I, I have a lot of bulbs. One of the more special bulbs I have yeah. that I'll just mention Please. is um, another reason Marco and I know each other so well is from the arts. And uh, Marco and I have been friends for so long. He was, he was with me when we came out with Evil Dead the musical That's many, right. many moons ago. And I've been fortunate that, to enjoy uh, this show has been around for 16 years. It's still going strong. And so there's a lot of fans out there. And so a, f- a fan sent me as a gift two handmade Evil Dead bulbs. Oh, wow. One is a, a Necronomicon face, which is the Book of the Dead. Right. But as a Christmas bulb. Nice. And another one is uh, Ash's S-Mart shirt as, um, a, as, a, as a Christmas bulb. Wow. And it's two of my most cherished bulbs. Not only are they handcrafted, but they were handcrafted by a fan of uh, a musical that... Uh, I created with some of my partners right. years ago, but it's just really nice. So every sp- every year, I make sure that those ornaments make the tree. You know, they always there can be a cutoff sometimes. Not every ornament makes a tree. Okay. You got to mix it up a little bit, right? Your tree. How important is your tree? And do you use a real tree or a artificial tree? I have to say, I've kept it real. Okay. Um, but I understand why now that I live in a condo and mm-hmm. uh, you know have kids and have cleaned needles out of little and cracks pets. of all over my house. Sure. I realize the value of and the the convenience of having a not real tree. Right. But we've kept it going with the real tree. Okay. You know, we get a nice like seven footer. Like we get a good oh, size wow. tree. Yeah, that's I would it. say every year. And it's a part of the experience is going to get that tree. And I remember that being special. Sure. My dad and I would drive down to the Canadian tire or to the whatever um Oh, what would it be? The the Scouts of Canada would be in the parking lot at Canadian Tire. Sure. You would pick a tree and strap it to your car, have a hot chocolate. I mean, again, more Christmas experiences of course. Uh, that create memories. And I love doing that with my daughter now. You know, uh, we go and pick a tree and Mason picks the tree. Right. Daddy pays for it and somebody sure. else gets paid to strap it to the car and away we go. Your, your <laughs> family is one of the few families that still sends us Christmas cards. That's something that's really sort of diminished as the world has become more um, electronic. Yes, But totally. we always get a Christmas card from you guys. And I, I would say the same from you yeah. guys. And so let me say thank you off the, the hop. And I think uh, it's Yours special. this year was beautiful. It's on our mantle. Oh, well, thank I don't you. I you saw it when you came in. No, I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's important. I think it's it's nice to, you know, well, we're, you and I are very close. So yeah. obviously I'm going to see you. Sure. There's a lot of people I don't see over the holidays. Mm-hmm. So it's just a nice way to say that you're thinking about them and you're extending the, the holiday wishes to their yeah. family. And I think it is a nice, um, it's a really nice gesture. And at, on the flip of the coin, I really enjoy receiving them. It's always nice to receive Christmas cards, it is an art, and it's not something that people do so much anymore, but is very much appreciated. So, hey, thank you. Yeah, thank you. If you're needing to write a Christmas card and you don't have enough friends, write one to Chris Bond, care of the Insomnia Project, and we'll make sure that he gets it. Thank you very much. I appreciate your Christmas favor. Thank Uh, you. uh, Chris, it's been so lovely having you here. Uh, Before we go, what is your Christmas beverage or food that you like around this time? That's a fantastic question. I would say beverage. I would. I. I like a good cider, um, a nice hot toddy cider. Okay. I would say. Yeah. 
Um, but I would also not turn down uh, a spiked eggnog. Sure. Um, or a nice, like, crisp with ice eggnog or a um, – what's the other thing? A lot of rum. Christmas to me is a rum is time. A rum, a rum. It's sweet. Uh, but a, a hot chocolate with a little bit of Bailey's in there. Nice. Um, all of those beverages are very acceptable and appreciated, and you can send those care of Chris Bond at the Insomnia <laughs> Project. Uh, as far as food goes, ooh, uh, Christmas turkey, Christmas ham. I'm not a big turkey guy. Oh. You know what? I know turkey is kind of the big celebratory meal. But don't you have the turkey leg when you're at Disney? I do. I love okay. the turkey leg. That's a different experience. All right. Though. So I'm I do, calling your bluff. When well, you're I, at the theme parks, it's okay. But it's different. There's, okay. it's, there's It tastes different. It's, it's a different experience lugging around in your hand like a club and eating it like a barbarian. Okay. That's, that's just a little bit more fun. Um, it's smoked. And I like a good okay. smoked taste, you That's know, sweet. versus a Christmas turkey, which might not be as in smoke Smoked, typically. right, necessarily, yeah. Um, and I, but I don't get me wrong, I do enjoy turkey. But if I had to say just a food that I enjoy around the holidays, I, I know this sounds like a cop-out answer, but not I'm going to say it. Christmas cookies, just bring them on. Like okay. little empire cookies. Yes, love them. Are delicious. Um, shortbreads. Yum. Um, anything, anything that's just festive and sweet, um, not necessarily a cakes don't really do uh, like a fruit cake for Christmas. I know a lot of people like that, or I know the lint chocolates, uh, kind of spread like the plague and sure. those are all well and fine, but a nice Christmas cookie that somebody made, that's just, it feels, um, heartfelt and it makes it taste ba- that much better. There you go. And those are always welcome on my Christmas table. Amazing. Yeah. Well, Chris, um, thank you so much for being here. If you want to hear more Christmas Chris, go to his podcast, We Like Theme Parks. I'm sure you're having a Christmas-themed one coming up. We most certainly do. So be sure to check us out at We Like Theme Parks or at www.welikethemeparks.com. You can find us there or anywhere that you get your podcasts like this fantastic one right here. Merry Christmas, my friend. Merry Christmas, Marco.